hello and welcome to Tradeflow Television. Bringing you valuable analysis and actionable intelligence through the global commodity markets. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. China's June aluminium imports surged by more than 490% from a year earlier, customs data showed on Thursday, to their highest in 11 years, as traders, who rarely buy large amounts from overseas, took advantage of the lower prices abroad. China, the world's top aluminium producer, imported 288,783 tons of unwrought aluminium and aluminium products last month, the General Administration of Customs said. That was more than double May's imports of 119,145 tons and a jump of 493.1% from June 2019, Customs said, as buyers took advantage of the differences between domestic and international prices. Imports were the highest since June 2009. China shipped out 354,038 tons of unwrought aluminium and aluminium products last month, down 30% year-on-year, customs data showed. Imports in January to June were 816,592 tons, up 219.2% year-on-year, while exports were 2.37 million tons, down 20.6% from a year earlier, leaving China a net exporter of 1.5 million tons in the first six months of 2020. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Congestion at China's east coast oil ports that is adding to costs for shippers and importers is likely to run well into August, with crude shipments set to hit another record high this month, according to analysts and Refinitiv data. The massive inflows are straining offloading facilities, while refiners and port operators in Shandong province, home to a quarter of China's refining capacity, are rushing to build new storage tanks. July seaborne arrivals into the world's biggest oil importer are expected to surge to 14.4 million barrels per day, Refinitiv analyst Emma Lee said, well above record imports of 12.9 million barrels of oil per day in June. China waded into oil markets in April when prices collapsed to multi-decade lows, snapping up cargoes for delivery in coming months. As of July 23, about 120 million barrels of crude were waiting off Chinese ports to discharge, up from around 80 million barrels in early July, Refinitiv data showed. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Weekly U.S. corn and soybean export sales reached multi-year highs in mid-July, the U.S. Agriculture Department said on Thursday, fueled by big purchases by China. China booked deals to buy 1.967 million tons of U.S. corn, its biggest weekly total of the yellow grain on record, in the week ended July 16. The weekly USDA report also showed soybean sales to China rose to 1.696 million tons, the most since March 2019. The Chinese purchases pushed the overall weekly total for corn export sales to 2.548 million tons, the most since March 2018, and soybean export sales to 2.666 million tons, the biggest since December 2018. Next we have agricultural price news. U.S. soybean futures climbed on Thursday, boosted by demand from China although escalating tensions between the two countries capped gains. Corn was mostly flat, as optimism over possible continued buying from China offset strong crop conditions. Wheat scaled back on technical selling. The most active soybean contract on the Chicago Board of Trade rose 2 minus 1 quarter cents to $8.97 minus 3 quarters a bushel by 1630 GMT. CBOT corn futures fell one half cent to three dollars and thirty four cents minus one quarter a bushel, while CBOT wheat was down three minus one half cents at five dollars and thirty one cents a bushel. We will now take a look at energy price moves. Oil were mostly steady on Thursday as rising U.S. fuel inventories and concerns about the impact of surging coronavirus cases on energy demand offset a weaker dollar, which is usually supportive. 
Brent futures fell 8 cents, or 0.2 percent, to $44.21 a barrel by 1557 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose 12 cents, or 0.3 percent, to $42.02. Both benchmarks earlier traded close to four-month highs hit earlier this week. Moving on to metal price moves. Copper prices rose on Thursday as available stockpiles in London Metal Exchange, LME, warehouses tumbled and a spike in the cost of metal for immediate delivery pointed to a tightening market. The dollar also slid to its weakest in nearly two years, making metals cheaper for buyers outside the United States. Benchmark copper on the LME was up 0.8% at $6,534.50 a ton at 1600 GMT, pushing towards last week's two-year high of $6,633. The metal has rebounded from a low of $4,371 in March as the coronavirus spread, and Chinese efforts to stimulate their economy by building metals-intensive infrastructure will support prices, said capital economics analyst Kieran Clancy. Aluminium. China's June aluminium imports surged by more than 490% year-on-year to an 11-year high of 288,783 tons as traders took advantage of lower prices abroad. City raised its aluminium price forecasts to $1,900 a ton in 2021 and $2,000 a ton in 2022. Finally we have the most recent news on the financial market. The dollar dropped to its lowest in nearly two years on Thursday, as investors continued to sell the buck on expectations the US economy will likely underperform its peers in the developed world with the surge in new coronavirus cases. By contrast, the euro rose to its highest since early October 2018, still basking in the glow of the European Recovery Fund approved earlier this week. A rise in US jobless claims last week, the first time in four months, also added to the dollar's woes, as a persistent increase in COVID-19 cases has derailed the labor market and dampened consumer demand. In midday trading, the dollar index was down 0.4% at 94.621, after hitting its lowest since late September 2018. It has lost nearly 8% since its March 20 peak, when a global dollar funding crunch saw a surge in demand. The dollar briefly edged higher after U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said the U.S. government will protect the stability of the currency. Against the Japanese yen, the dollar was down 0.3% at 106 yen and 82 sen. The U.S. currency was also down 0.5% against the Swiss franc at 0.9252 franc. Earlier it dropped to a more than four-month low. Still, some analysts believe the dollar's sell-off is overdone, especially against the euro, and the buck will likely bounce back. That is all for today's news on the commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow TV as we continue to provide you with more updates. You can also follow us on Twitter at TradeFlowTV1 which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop.